What's going on, Nerd Nation? Welcome back to the Comic Book Nerd Nation podcast, episode number 36. I'm Fox 2. We got the Pirate. Hey, guys. Topher. Now with 50% less fun. And the whole effing Brian. I feel like we're all pilots wearing these headphones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, that being said, let's jump into what we've been reading. Um, Topher, what about you? What have you been reading lately? Well, um, with with Guardians of the Galaxy uh, being released, I have uh, I've been I've been doing some more reading on uh, you know some cosmic Marvel stuff. Um, yeah, I mentioned a while back that I read the uh, Annihilation events mm. uh, that uh, you know that, that dealt with a whole bunch of you know kind of set the stage for the current state of the the marvel cosmic stuff um so uh so out of that we had uh nova had his own solo series for for a while and that was the first time where the guardians of the galaxy all got together and um and so i've been reading the heck out of those they're they're really good they're fantastic stories this is a uh, these came out. Uh, they started in I want to say 2008. Um, I'm and ran till uh, the ones I'm currently reading were from 2010. So I mean, these are just a few years old. Um, <clears throat> but uh, but they they've been they've been very good. Um, I highly enjoy them. Um, some 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 really great storytelling. Um, I'll, I'll be honest. The um, the Annihilation Conquest event, which uh, which is basically the the Phalanx, which is a a uh, <clears throat> a race of, of beings in the Marvel universe that uh, they're basically techno organic and they infect people, you know, like and turn them to machines by by touching them, and um, and they're basically taking over the uh, the the Kree, um, who are the the alien race of mostly blue-skinned uh, aliens um, <clears throat> that, uh, you know, Captain Marvel was a Kree, uh, Ms. Marvel got her powers from, uh, you know, from a blood transfusion from a Kree, um, you know, so they've been around. Um, in fact, Guardians of the Galaxy has a uh, has some Kree in it. Uh, Ronan the Accuser is a big guy, uh, is a big, big Kree, and he featured pretty heavily in the storyline. But anyway, so, so Annihilation Conquest is... Um, is you know the phalanx taking over the Kree and uh, and and Star Lord Peter Quill, um, you know, basically getting forced into uh, putting together a, a group to uh, to try and you know sabotage them from the inside and um, and 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 Rocket Raccoon and Groot meet up for the first time and and uh, you know they all get together and then and then after the the events of the story, um, you know Peter Quill decides, hey, you know, we should have a group. You know, we we need a team that that goes and heads off things like this before they happen because the universe can't stand another giant war like this. You know, it's practically ripping reality apart. So he decides to put together the Guardians of the Galaxy, and then they get their own series out of it. So um, I, I'll be honest, it's 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 one of the best crossover events I've I've ever read. Um, it, when Alexian Conquest was, it was fantastic. And Nova and Guardians of the Galaxy series, the book came out of it, have been have been great. I'm like 20, 30 issues into each of them now, and um, they're they're almost over. They I think they only ran 30, 40 issues, um, but uh, it's it's they've been great series. I really enjoyed. Isn't them. Ultron in that too? Yeah, it turns out um, that that uh, the reason the Phalanx have been, you know, trying to take over the Kree and whatnot is because Ultron is controlling them, and it's, like, revealed about halfway through that, that Ultron is basically the, the you know, the, the main villain um, who's masterminding the whole thing, and it kind of works perfectly with, you know, his desire um, for, you know, to prove that machine evolution, you know, uh, is... is is superior to, um, you know, to that of fleshy meat bags and <laughs> and and whatnot. So it's it's uh, just the 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 scope of the story and the way that they did all the heroes and they had them all separately come together and they showed different parts. Like it just it had a gravity to it that that a lot of stories just don't have. Like everything. Thing felt very important, you know. The way they brought it together for a climactic finish was was incredible, and um, it was you know like by the end of it, you were I was just kind of like, wow, that was that was really good. Um, so I I highly recommend that one. Nice, Brian. What about you? What have you been reading? 
I haven't read much in the past coming weeks. I read the, in the most past recent coming weeks. Are you like days of the future? The, past? Yes, <laughs> I've come back from the future. I haven't read much in the days <laughs> of future past. To fix it podcast before it blows up and the world ends. And come back three weeks to tell you that I spend the next three weeks doing nothing. Well, well, the funny thing is that in the future we're doing the same thing. Very bad. <laughs> In this very moment. No, but uh, the one book I have read in, in recently has been the um, original Sin tie-in for The Amazing Spider-Man. Again, I didn't like it. I don't, it was just, like, boring to me. I don't know if you guys read it, but it has to deal with Spider-Man's original Sin which was basically the spider that bit Peter Parker did not die after it fall, fell off of him. It bit somebody else and oh, built a yeah. chick. And somehow this chick, it tells you like a quick story of this. Peter, like, from the Watcher's eye explosion, Peter finds out, like, her, like, what happened to her, then that, that she's been like she was taken from her parents by this dude and <clears throat> trained and something like that and I don't know it was weird I mean sold into the sex trade and yeah she has webs was, that was come a from her situation yeah no. it was no. uh, <laughs> <laughs> but she's she's like she's quicker than him but he's stronger than her. She's faster than his spider sense or something like that, like, and that, like, he could detect where she is from her spider sense, like a, kind of like a homing device, and she's got webs that come out of her fingertips, and her costume is, she just webs herself up, and her name is Silk. I, I just, I don't know. As a big, giant Spider-Man fan, I just... Couldn't get into it. Uh, so where's she been all this time? And some like... dude had her in a bunker because if she was released too early, some dude named Morlin will come and find them and kill all the spiders from different universes, so which leads she... into um, the next like a Spider-Man event that's coming up called Spider Spider Verse, where all these Spider Men from different universes come together and fight this guy or something like that? I don't know. Where did why did she get her web? Her web why, why did like, she get why did she get web shooters in her fingers? Like I mean the the spider bit Peter Parker too. Did he not I mean he didn't get web shooters. He built right. them himself. So it's kind of weird in retrospect then that she got the exact power that he had to mechanically build himself without knowing she existed. I don't know. The The ending was shit, too, because at the end, he's, like, chasing her. They're fighting, and then he's chasing her, and then all of a sudden, at the end, the last issue, he's like, oh, I never felt like this before, and they're making out. What? what? And she's yelling. Then, then and they she, make, I quit. she bites yeah. his head off. Then, then and... she, like, yeah. And then, like, after the whole time, she's yelling at him for being released early because that oh, he's... This weird <laughs> dude can find them now. Because that weird dude wants to hunt down all the spiders. I don't know. I just well, don't have you know. Seen, uh, have you seen the robot chickens? What the robot chicken Star Wars episode where like, you know, Darth Vader is talking to Luke and he's like, "I am your father," and he's like, "No, that's not true. That's impossible." And then he's like, "And the Force isn't really the Force. It's just a bunch of little things called midichlorians." And oh, he's he's like, like, that's improbable. Uh, that's improbable. And he's like, and the Empire will be destroyed by Ewoks. And he's like, okay, if you're not going to take this seriously, I'm out. <laughs> I, I kind of feel like that's where a lot of these original Sin stories are going. I just, I, just, I don't know, yeah. You I know mean... what, though? It's, it's, it's funny because I get, like, the original Sin concept doesn't seem like it's that fucking hard. Like, it but they're doing... Cool. It, well, yeah, but I mean, it's like it's like okay. All you have to do is come up with a story based on each character that's like some se deep dark secret. You don't have to fucking rewrite the Hulk and Iron Man. You don't have to have fucking shit that doesn't make sense happen in Spider Man. 
You don't have to make how is, Falcon how is Captain that? America and Thor a chick. I'm just saying, like... I don't think that has anything to do with Original Sin, yeah, but... It doesn't. Do it's Marvel's bullshit that they've done the past two months. Well, I disagree on, on that front. Of course you do. I, I'm just saying. I don't mind the, <laughs> the Captain America thing. He's been... <clears throat> Taken, no, I'm, I'm just using taken that as an example of, of like random stuff that they're doing big right now, like to storylines. Like I don't, but all that hindsight, I'm just yeah. It's like why do you have to take a major character, reveal his public <clears throat> identity, and put him in a completely different comic book? You know, like what is Marvel doing? Oh no, wait, that's Nightwing. That's DC. Um, yeah, you're right. Yeah, they shouldn't change characters at all. That's that's dumb. Yes, I'm, I'm not talking about. I'm just talking over all the the choices that they're making with their publications right now. It has nothing to do with just specific characters. I don't want to hurt your feelings saying anything negative. My about feelings Marvel, aren't so hurt. I'm I just say, oh no, I understand. I understand. I won't. I I'll, I'll keep the Marvel jokes aside. But um, comic book nerd nation fight club. <laughs> <laughs> I won't. I won't speak about you know the uh, you know the, the great the great and powerful. Since you're already talking, what have you been reading? I'm, I'm not. Pirate. I'm not defending them. At, like in all cases, like all this original sin stuff. A lot of this sounds stupid. I'll I'll be honest. I'm like, just saying. I I'm just using it. In, I'm just using the other stuff in hindsight with the whole. Okay. The bullshit, so the, the, moving the on. Stuff. <laughs> what uh, what have you been reading this week, pirate? Uh, I read. I read Nothing a little bit of Walking Dead. I went through some older issues of that. Um, and I'm trying. I, my goal is to get current by the time the new season starts. So I don't know if it's going to happen or not because I'm going to have to really buckle down. Cause I'm only on like issue. I started a while ago on like issue one, and I'm up to twenty, thirty something. So I got like a hundred to go about. <laughs> but um, what else? Oh, uh, I got a. Musician's friend catalog in the mail today. That that's real real nice. You still get the paper catalogs? They just, just started sending the to me. I don't know why. Like, How dude, old they, school? They, <laughs> this is yeah. Um. Anyways, what else? Um. Did I read? Zounds catalog. Maybe. <laughs> did you read Victoria's Secret in the room all by yourself? Well, no, but I, I did see the Fredericks of Hollywood. He's real nice. All right. <laughs> well, I guess I will go then. I can't remember what else I read this week. Uh, I read, um, let's see, the new um, Hulk Iron Man tie-in for uh, Original Sin, and it just came out today, and it, uh, as we're recording this at least, and it just goes further down the rabbit hole of like, I really expected for them to like, and they still might, I guess, like kind of pull back towards the end and like, oh, but he didn't really mess with the the gamma bomb and it really wasn't Tony Stark's fault. But like the way that they're doing it, they're just digging themselves deeper and deeper into like convincing the reader and providing more and more supporting evidence that he is the reason that Bruce Banner became the Hulk. Um, I don't, I don't like, I don't like it, it really. I mean, what, yeah. wait, what, what, what? I mean, okay. So I've I've heard that that um, the Hulk coming up, like um, Iron Man is. I mean, he, Tony Stark's moving to San Francisco, and he wants to share his extremist technology with with everybody, and supposedly he's going to use it to partially cure Banner after you know all the head shit going on with him lately and the Hulk's going to get super smart. That already and, happened. Okay, well, I'm, I'm behind then. Um, but, and then Bruce Banner's going to decide that, like, you know, gamma-powered creatures are bad and basically try to eradicate all the Hulks. Um, That's a story I'm looking forward to. Yeah, that sounds interesting, like him going head-to-head -head again with, with uh, Ross and and, uh, you know, and, and She-Hulk, even She-Hulk would be would be an interesting dynamic to see the two of them, you know, fight over that. But uh, but I, I guess I was thinking then that maybe, you know, that was going to be the catalyst for Tony Stark wanting to help, you know, Bruce Banner. But I guess that's already happened, so. Yeah, that already happened before, actually before Original Sin dropped. And so is now. That con what? Is that, con is that continuity issues or is this yeah, a whole nother? Yeah, no, that's all. Yeah, that's all continuity. 
because it play, they talk Marvel. about they talk about it in original sin too and it's playing part of what's happening in the original sin tie-ins with iron man versus uh hulk so it's i don't know i i just don't really care for this whole tony stark screwed with the gamma bomb while he was wasted drunk uh because the uh because the military paid him to be a consultant and try and improve the gamma bomb for increased damage like it it just it just doesn't it changes too much of the origin of the of the character I, don't, I, I think it's interesting right. sometimes when they retcon characters' origins, you know, like add a different twist on it or something. But you, you can't make a change that major with a character that big. I mean, Hulk is A-list. You know, you like if you want to screw with, uh, I don't know, some other random villain or something, yeah, you know, like yeah. have it be that Tony Stark was Still responsible bad. for, you know, yeah, for, <laughs> for, for something else. But for the Hulk's origin, I mean, like, that's pretty big. That would, that's that you know. I mean, the whole thing is you know, you know, Banner feels guilty about the the, the bomb and 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 I I just yeah. no, it's, it's it really I don't like it. It really doesn't it, fit. I don't think in it would be like retconning you know Spider Man's you know in Uncle Ben <laughs> or thing, or like know? Superman like just kidding he didn't actually he's not actually an alien from Krypton like, <laughs> yeah like you couldn't like there's no way to pull that off that wouldn't at, like aggravate the shit out of like avid Superman fans I don't so, know I, I have a question about that um and, and you guys what do you guys that have read it may have already addressed it. Um, who's who's the gray hawk? Or is it Joe Joe? Gale Joe fix it. Joe, Joe fix it. Joe, Joe fix, Gambit. Yeah. yeah we were saying, Joe, <laughs> Joe anyway. Gambit. No, it's Joe fix um, it. But so is he in this storyline? No, as well? he's he's actually just a Another different personality. personality of Bruce Banner. Like if you think about Bruce Banner as having multiple personality disorder, and the series in the late nineties actually did a really good job. I've got some issues that you can read that, that really explain it very well. well and it, there's actually it, it, like dozens and dozens of versions of the Hulk. It just depends right, on it, which personality of Bruce Banner's is taking precedence. No, 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 but it didn't, wasn't it, and, and like I said, I haven't read the Hulk as much, definitely no, 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 no as much as you have, but you let me borrow one of the essentials. Mm -hmm. And if I remember right, wasn't he in it as the one that like he covered up like Bruce Banner covered him up when the gamma bomb went off. No, no, no. Okay, no, so that's you're Rick thinking, Jones. yeah, oh, a bomb. Yeah, you're thinking, yeah. no. What he's talking about is in the original, um, the first two episodes, or first, yeah, first two issues of the original um, Incredible Hulk from 1962. The Hulk was actually gray in color. Oh yeah. Um, but Stan Lee decided that that didn't look good, so they changed it to green. That wasn't like two different characters. That was no, just the Incredible Hulk. No, 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 Joe no, no. Fixit's not in that book in, that I loaned in, you at all. I think he's talking about the, the, in the Hulk's origin story. Banner realizes the detonation is going to go off of the gamma bomb, and there's some and there's a kid out there. Yeah, that's like, Rick Jones. In, in the field, and he runs yeah. out and he and he, and he throws him into a ditch and he covers him and he basically yeah. absorbs. Yeah, that's Rick Jones. His name's Rick Jones, and later on he ends up getting gamma rays anyway and becomes the character A bomb. A -bomb. Yeah, which is a blue. Oh. He's blue, and he's that doesn't happen until way, way later. Okay, because yeah. he's like a, it's um, okay. Uh, did, like they, a, did they, did they have bomb. him in the origins or not the origins with the original Sentai? Uh, no. no, he's not in it. Has that scene even happened? Like where he? Uh, someone? Yeah, yeah, he. he yeah, that still happens. Okay. Um, they haven't really covered yeah, wait, exactly hold on. what happened. So. The only reason Banner got blasted was because he went to save Rick Jones. So why is he pissed at off at Stony, Tony Stark? Oh, because if Tony Stark for... because Tony Stark made alterations to the bomb like to make it more powerful. So had he not done that, I guess theoretically potentially he wouldn't have become the Hulk. He, he would just be just, dead. He might have just died. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't know. <laughs> So again, it the, the like whole thing it. again the whole thing doesn't really fit, you know, when you start really looking at it. But the other thing that I read this week um, that I wanted to touch on was Justice League Thirty Two. 
which is like mm. I think one of the very first follow ups on the Justice League front from the the aftermath of Forever Evil. And well, so like that... the very first couple pages you see is uh, Superwoman. Superwoman singing to the baby that's in her stomach. And then it I don't know it, it's it's really, I'm intrigued to see where they're going to take it because it looks like, uh, you know, it looks, it looks pretty good. And they make reference um, of the power ring found where, remember where Sinestro cut the, the ring, the, the power ring guy's arm off with the saw uh-huh. blade? Well, mm-hmm. the power ring it, found, yeah, right. It found that girl and she's Last in issue. this. Um, she's in this and she's like running amok and everything and like causing a bunch of damage and shit. And the doom squad, doom troop, doom squad. I can't remember. Doom squad. Yeah. Doom, doom patrol, doom patrol. The doom patrol, um, is going and like fighting with her and shit. And they make the ring is actually talking and it makes reference to trying to get the attention of someone else in the multiverse to come to earth and it talks about how the ring is actually Volthoom from the green lantern universe which was the first yeah. lantern which is a well, they, amazing they make... story by uh jeff johns it's his last story arc on green and lantern. if you remember if you remember from that book sinestro's well the guy in the cloak is telling the young um recruit a story about where all the Green Lanterns from Earth were doing. Mm-hmm. Diamond Baz's story is training her, Jessica Cruz. Yeah, that's right. what I was going to say. They made right. reference to that. Yeah, The the ring is the personality of the, the first Green Lantern? Yeah, yeah the ring it is an embodiment. Apparently. Not the first Green Lantern, the first, the first Lantern. lantern. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So it's, he was like... Was the first Lantern a good guy or a bad guy? Because, he was, like, he was power by the ring was like... He was good, but he, he was, was twisted like by the power. Character. Yeah. Because, like, think Power think Ring was constantly being neutral. put down by the ring and everything, and was talking shit to him the entire time, and, you yeah, know, no, was John, encouraging was, him to be a bad Byron, guy, he was basically. Definitely, so. Yeah, he was definitely not a neutral character. Volthoom in, in... Was evil. Yeah, in okay. Wrath of the All First right. Lantern, he was very evil and trying to, like, destroy the entire universe. Well, that makes more sense. I thought then. it was based upon, like, him being, like, like a true neutral... Like, like this is, like, um... No. Uh, how was it? No, he, he's trying to force emotion on the Guardians. Mm. And he he is, uh, like, harnessing the power of all of the emotional spectrum to do that. And, uh, and that... I thought he was made up of the image of the Guardians. Like, they made him after the image of themselves. And that's why it was uh, like... No, he, no. He, was a, he was a person. Yeah, he was there. He was there to witness the... Um, the birth of the universe, yeah, or the birth like of that. the universe, or something like that. The spark of the original emotion, and, I mean, and that maybe affected him. Well, okay, so the second, the second army was the Manhunters, right? I haven't read that one. No, the first army was the Manhunters. The second okay. army were the Green Lanterns. The third army were those weird alien things that okay. Just yeah, fucked the Manhunters are the true neutral ones. Never mind. That's who I'm thinking of. Those are the ones that the Guardians made. Yes. They, yeah. they, okay, so it's the Manhunters that were the true neutral. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Sorry. But anyway, yeah. so so the way that this looks like it's going is it looks like there's it looks like there's going to be a huge crossover event to me because we've already heard from the Green Lantern creative teams that there's later this year or early next year, I think it's later this year, there's going to be a huge Green Lantern universe crossover that's going to involve every title in the green in the in the lantern universe and with the mention of volthoom in justice league that leads me to believe it's going to be a crossover between the entire green lantern universe and justice league books i hope so i i want to see jeff jordan uh jeff jordan jeff johns jeff johns Johns write hal jordan again and since he's not in the justice league anymore there's no he's not writing them yeah, I think I think well, that would be an amazing, amazing uh, tie-in or crossover, like to have all time, that stuff together. 
the last time Jeff Johns wrote a crossover between the Justice League and the Lantern Corps, we had uh, Blackest Night and Brightest Day, so that's what that I'm was pretty saying. badass. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <clears throat> like The potential is definitely there for something that could be fucking epic. And the Volthoom character, like if you guys haven't read um, Wrath of the of the First Lantern, um, let me know. I'll let you borrow the. Uh, I have the, I have the book with all of it in it, and it is it's amazing. So, um, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what direction this all goes. But I think that I think that that's going to end up being a huge crossover event between everything in the justice league and everything in the green lantern universe. So, okay guys, if you're still listening at this point, if you're watching on YouTube, rather, you might've noticed that some of us have changed clothes and we no longer have Topher with us. We had some technical difficulties, um, had a few issues and whatnot, and we're splicing together two separate recordings to make sure that we get you one whole episode on Wednesday, New Comic Book Day, at 12 p.m. noon, like we've done 35 weeks in a row up to this video. So we didn't want to miss that because we know that, you know, we have some actually very loyal fans and we really appreciate the support. So we want to make sure that we get this up. So we've already covered what people have been reading. Let's jump into some news and start talking about that stuff. Uh, starting things off, something I'm very excited about is the Gotham TV show that Fox is going to be putting out. I can't remember exactly when it's going to be released. For some reason, I want to think next year, like I think next it, I think fall. It's October. <sighs> I don't think it's, is it this year? Yeah, it is this year. Wow. Yeah, I thought it was this year. Like this October, year is November. flying. Cause I remember, I remember hearing about it originally thinking like, damn, that is going to take forever for, before this comes out. But, uh, damn, that's really sneaking up pretty quickly. So just here in a matter of, Two months, basically. Three, two and a half, three months. We're going to be able to check that out. But anyway, the news about Gotham is that throughout the first season of Gotham, they have just announced that another character that's going to be a recurring character is Salvatore Moroni, which is the person that's responsible for Harvey Dent becoming Two-Face. What, uh, what are you guys' thoughts on that? Brian, anything? Um, well, I mean... I don't think we'll get a uh, Harvey Dent because Harvey Dent will be supposed to. Well, no. Be... Well, maybe not yet, but in future Has seasons. He been cast? He hasn't even been cast. He's, he's not one of those. I mean, it is a Fox show because, and it could get canceled after the first season. That's a but... very valid point. Even though, regrettably, I am not one of the people well, that has they... seen Firefly yet, and I will. Oh. I know. I know. I'm doing it wrong. I know. Topher tells me all the time. I will, uh, I will, I will definitely check it out. So I mean, it's only like thirteen episodes. I know it's not even that. It's, it's not that, even it that many that. episodes. I just can't get my lazy ass to watch it. What, uh, what do you, what do you think about this? I, I love it. I think it's awesome. It's adding more characters, but you know, and you know, I think he's he's a real character, not like um, Jada Pickett Smith, Fish Maroni, Macaroni, whatever her name is. So it's adding a real, a real yeah. bat, uh, crime boss from you know the comic books, and not just like a penguin or a little cat woman. So I don't, I like it. I yeah. mean, I like it. I like it too. I think it really goes to, I think it goes to show that they're doing their best to pay homage, not necessarily follow strictly the comic book storylines, but they're, they're doing their best to pay homage to the source material, which is, you know, detective comics and the Batman, um, storylines and stuff. And, and the history that's been laid by hundreds and hundreds of issues of these comics yeah. by adding one of those arguably pivotal B list Batman characters. You know, he's not a, a Riddler or a Joker or a penguin or even a Catwoman or anything like that. It, he, but he's definitely in that second tier because he's so he he's he's been such a crucial part of affecting the overall universe of of Batman because of creating Two Face. Yeah. What do you uh? What do you have any thoughts on this pirate? Yeah, I think that. I mean, I like the idea of them adding in. 
a, a character that's not in the forefront of of the comic book. And I think that with the success of certain shows like Arrow and you know the movies of the Marvel uh, that they're putting out, I think that that you're right. Like I think that Hollywood and the big screen or TV shows and the bigger companies are are realizing the the benefits of actually putting story and thought into into the comic book um, genre. Yeah, the shit's already because, written. Why not use it? Well, it's, you know, instead of them just trying to do it, just to put Hollywood spin on it and fuck it all up like they've done so many times in the past, I think they're actually trying to put, you know, the material that's already been laid in front of them and say, okay, this is what we got to work with. This is what's worked already in a book. Let's just let's just put it on a screen. I know. I don't, I don't understand. Me. I don't understand it because it's... When you think about it, they damn near have almost scripts fucking written for them that they can right. just about pull right off the fucking shelf and just put it directly onto the TV screen and and that's fucking what makes take my money. I'll, I'll, I'll I want to see it. They like with the TV show, they have the opportunity to know what's all what stories already work and what stories don't. So yeah. all they have to do is just. To, just Lay rip it, the fucking shit print, right out of the you know comics. I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Kind of I mean, don't try to change shit and make, add, you know, I think you get people who, like writers, they want to add their artistic touch. Yeah, they want to get theirs. overly artistic with it, something that's yeah, already I artistic. That's where they, I think that's where they, they kind of mess it up, I yeah. think, at some point. But, I don't know, I mean, there's... I mean, the Flash TV show from the 90s with John, Wesley, or John Shipley West, or whatever it was, that was pretty good. Mark Hamill played the trickster. I thought he did a really good job as a trickster. Um, the one the thing, the one thing that I really hope doesn't happen is I hope that bringing in this oh, shit, mob get... character, I really hope that they're not pushing this into like a cop show type of thing. I mean, we know that this is already going to focus around. Um, what's his name? Ben uh, Ben McKenzie as Commissioner Gordon or Lieutenant Gordon at this point. I really hope that they're not going to introduce this mob character to make this like a fucking NYPD Blue Shield CS, CSI mm-hmm. Gotham type of show. You know what I mean? I mean, could you see? You could definitely see it going that way I because mean, of because of the previous success of the cop shows, the NYPD blues, the CSIs. I just really hope that that's not the, they're, they're like fucking ace in the hole. Like, all right, you know what? We'll try the comic book shit, but if it doesn't go good, we're going to make this into fucking NYPD Gotham or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just hope that they're not thinking this is like, like their, their safety blanket into like the mob versus cop thing that like, the Sopranos and everybody else has done. Well, it's like, I mean, if you think about it, I mean, that's what it basically is. It's, uh, I mean, there's not, yeah, yeah. I mean, kind of, I would ra- I personally, I would rather watch a show that is more about, not so much about commissioner or, or Lieutenant Gordon becoming commissioner Gordon through battling the mob. I would rather watch a show that is more focused on, the developmental years of Bruce Wayne and what what changed in his persona, what changed in his personality to develop him into that inquisitive mind that developed into the world's greatest detective. What but they've already said with, that they're not gonna they're not gonna center it around Bruce Wayne. Right, you know right. What I mean? But but you can have some of that in there along with you know you, you sprinkle that in along with with talking about what made dr jonathan crane into scarecrow what you know you plant all these seeds that developed all these different characters that they've already announced you know they've got what um poison ivy is going to be in there catwoman's going to be in there i mean obviously as their younger counter you know their younger personas but how cool would it be to see a show that focuses on the, the 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 pivotal elements of their childhood that sent them down that path I agree with that, but I think that it would be a long, drawn, boring, boring show. And here's why: because a lot of those characters they didn't become who they were, and far, far late. And I mean, Batman was already established in some of them. I yeah, mean, so you can't say true. like, you can't say Jonathan seeing Jonathan Crane become Scarecrow, it when he when 
you know, 10 you years, see, right. you 15 can't see years, it. You can't whatever see it before. You can Scarecrow, but you can see there had to be elements of that subliminally I mean, lying within that personality. And it would just be interesting to see some glimpses of those and how they showed. I mean, it would take a really talented writer to make it come out. Don't get me wrong, but I think it could well, be they really got this, They got a team of writers. I mean, that's yeah. that's another thing that causes problems, too, is when you yeah, have a team you get of like 37 fucking writers trying to come up with one story. Which, you know, it it, it works, I guess, for for, you know certain shows if all the writers have the same picture but you know a, a group of people throwing things around just to kind of one up the person on your left is, yeah <laughs> that's when shit gets crazy <laughs> then, you, then you end up with a real we can have explosions like let's I throw in this is the grandmother it's like a <laughs> it's <laughs> like a fucking michael bay television show she like, was an ice cream woman driving a truck <laughs> and my and fucking explosion is bigger than your explosion motherfucker like, My slow mo is slower than your slow mo. Yeah, right. Like just a fucking room full of one uppers and just going around. Yeah. Maybe that's how Michael Bay films come to be. Oh god. Like zero fucking storyline, zero plot, just fucking bullets, like guns that have fucking seven hundred and fifty round magazines, <laughs> fucking pistols that carry seventy five bullets, and Let's fucking the turtles eight foot tall. Few, yeah, eight foot turtles <laughs> like. Just massive and shit. Audio. His his movies are so audio rich. It's crazy. They are. You know what? I will give him credit though. I really do like. I really do like a lot of the audio richness of of his movies. His movies, plot wise, are terrible. Visually, they're pretty oh. cool, and audio Dude. is unbelievable. But that's why it, it, as a whole, if it's anyone's not ever good. if anyone's been to our website and seen my write up on the new Transformers, that's like the worst acting I've ever seen in my life probably the worst story i've ever seen in my life versus transformers but damn the special effects but damn it looks cool they look cool but, not acting like i give it five <laughs> out of ten and it's only because the special effects and then and the and the audio like damn. everything else the dude swing shift accents for like i can't tell if he's australian irish scottish well, this sounds like this sounds like a uh, good good point to plug our website www.comicbooknerdnation.com Get over there. We got some news articles, some reviews, some whole lot of shit on there, and uh, some free forums for you guys to get in, ask us questions, post your own shit, whatever. Get get over there, sign up for the free forums, and let us know what you think of the show. Um, next thing that 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 we just found out today, actually, as we're recording this, um, I think this just broke today. Actually, Sony has announced that they're going to have a female led. Spider-Man spinoff in 2017, and I would like to just take a second and thank my girlfriend for sending me an email about this today. Otherwise, I wouldn't have personally. One of you guys might have brought this to the fucking table, but I wouldn't have had any idea about it. So, uh, female-led Spider-Man movie spinoff in 2017. Pirate, do we know? Do we know exactly what character it's going to be, or do we just know that it's going to uh, be a well, female-led spinoff? Well, they've already. Spin-off? Kind of opened the door with the uh, uh, was it Black Cat or Kitty Pride on on the last uh, Spider Man? Pride's from X Men. Kitty Pride, it's definitely yeah. not Kitty Pride. Nah, she was no Black Cat. Black Cat. Yeah, the chick the, that was uh, in the Amazing Spider Man too. And then they talked. Let's see, the Sinister Six. Pull a story up here. And that um, well, that's been pushed back also. Sinister yeah. Six has. Yeah, they I think we both have. Six, Amazing Spider Man. Really? Now, do you know Brian? Do you know much? I know you're a spider. You're a big Spider-Man fan. Do you know much about Black Cat? I <laughs> like, like my brain is splicing together the comic books and what was it? You know, the animated TV show uh, okay. on in the '90s. I think. Well, she's a thief, just like Catwoman. Okay, now hang on. Before we go, when you say when you say anime, animated series from the nineties, and I've probably brought this shit up before, and I swear to God, one one of these times, myself or somebody's gonna look this up, and we're gonna figure it out. But wasn't there a either t- movies or a live action TV show from like the late eighties of Spider Man? Live action TV show from not the late eight. I don't think it was the late eighties. I think it was early, way earlier than that. I think it was like a, there was something in the seventies. No, because I remember watching it on TV. 
Like they did, dude. I I remember seeing Happy Days on TV too when I was a kid, but that was oh, from the fucking seventies. That's a very good point you made there. <laughs> that is a very very good point. All right, so what do you got? Um, what do you got on this was, thing? Was 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 Black Cat? Was she the one? Do you guys remember the video game uh, Maximum Carnage on Sega yeah. Genesis? Do you remember uh, when you could get Cloak, and then it was like, you could you no. could call in Kitty Pride and Cloak. No Cloak and Dagger. Well, Clary's Cloak and Dagger, uh-huh. but then there was also Kitty Pride, or was it Dagger that did the backflips across the screen? Or was that Kitty Pride? I think that was Dagger. Because Cloak opened up his cloak. Yeah. And then it, everything went black, and the guys dropped. And then, well, anyways, why I bring that up? Uh, it was here we go. Because... The Amazing Spider-Man, nineteen seventy-seven to nineteen seventy-nine TV show. There you go. That's what it is. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. All right, so. There, it said then there's also the Venom movie, which still doesn't have an official release date through the deadline reports it titled Venom Carnage. So I wonder if they have a Maximum Carnage movie. Give give the properties back to Marvel. That's what I'm just saying. <laughs> give them, yeah. Just give I mean, them they up already. Going, I mean, to keep... You know, I, don't wanna, I don't want them to ruin Venom again. And Carnage. But I've that... never seen the I've never seen the uh, the Carnage was it Spider Man three was that the one with Venom Yeah, I've never seen that one. Good, don't. Is it that bad? Yeah, yeah it's, it's terrible. It's pretty bad. Yeah, it's not. I wouldn't say like it's like. I mean, would you rank it, it up there with not... like Batman and Robin bad? Yeah. Wow. What about X Men Origins Wolverine or whatever? Yeah, to me it is. Oof. Dude, the whole he's, time, he's, the but whole he's time. A, Brian's a huge Spider-Man fan though, okay. so that's. Kind of All right. But yeah. like, okay, when Spider-Man has the black suit, Doug, like, oh, does it? Does he take it off and put it back on? No. Like in the movie, once he gets the black symbiote, he's able to take that co- that black costume he wears off of him, and hide it in a trunk. But somehow it's still affecting his mind. And he becomes like emo Peter Parker, where he's walking down the street, all dressed in like a black button up and a black pants, snapping his fingers and doing this to people. What? <laughs> Are you serious? And like he gets super dance powers, and he takes Fle- <laughs> that movie's Felicia Harding to, or was it Felicia Harding, or was what? it to a, like a dance, a dance. Are you fucking kidding him? So, so he turns and into he emo was... Peter Parker? Yeah, it's so bad. He has a oh, man. Over. I but feel like... Over. I feel like there are so many of these, like, wonderfully bad comic book movies out there that we have to start every so often. We've got to do, like, an a audio... A mystery science theater to it? Yeah, like a fucking audio <laughs> commentary where we just, like, okay, we're at this moment of this... You know, this I've been time trying to get con- fucking how long now? God damn! I know, dude. We need to. We need. We seriously need to get on that shit because that that shit I think would be absolutely goddamn hilarious. If you're still watching this at, the, at this point, you are a true fan of the comic book nerd nation. Leave a comment in the comment section below and tell us if you want to see us drop some commentary over top of some of your favorite slash least favorite. Terrible comic book movies, Batman and Robin, fucking X Men Origins, Wolverine, uh, Spider Man oh, yeah. number three, fucking all of those things. Let us know in the comment section the below, and we will we'll we'll do it. We'll make it happen, and we'll we'll have it set up to where you can sync up and watch the movie while you listen to us just completely bash the shit out of it. Uh, I, I think it'll be a lot of fun for us we'll and for, for the listeners. I'm thinking about. It. Spider watching Spider Man three again. Right, see how fun that would be. Just you can sit back I think and listen to Brian incorpor- punch himself I in think, the dick. I think we should do it though, but I think we should incorporate some form of drinking game with it. Every we time the movie too. sucks, drink. Damn, we'll be like, we better get some. We better, <laughs> it's gonna be damn, in a bottle. We better get some fucking EMTs in here or something. I think that I think that like just complete craziness we should be able to call out like that's that's bullshit we drink and then we have to drink and by the end of the movie hopefully we're shit faced and it makes it even more funnier i think i think this is i think we're on to an idea here we'll pitch it to topher i think he'll be in 
and uh, we'll figure out a way to set this up and and make it happen. I like drinking just as much as relatively <laughs> soon. Yeah. Um, all right, moving on. Uh, there's a rumor out there that I'm not sure how accurate, how inaccurate, how old, anything. I don't know shit about it, but it was brought to my attention by Mr. Whole F and Brian here. Uh, rumors of Miss Marvel cameo potentially in Age of Ultron. You give me a little bit of info on that. I mean, who knows by now? I mean, we haven't seen anything on Age of Ultron yet. No, we've seen we've more lot, shit but... from Batman v Superman than we have. Did you see the? Yes, shifting gears. Sorry. Uh, did you see the the pictures that have um, the set pictures the crushed, and set like videos? gas station like, and cop car. Yeah, the cop car and yeah. the gas station and shit that from the Batman v Superman set. I mean, you All knew there was going to be say about that is a talking raccoon and a tree got a movie before the Justice League. Somebody's doing something wrong. Fair enough. I com- I completely agree with you. I for the first time in any Batman v Superman related uh, conversation, I completely agree with you, Brian. Um, oh, DC up to this point in? has not done it right. Well, what was the final numbers for the, the opening weekend for Guardians of the Galaxy? It was like 90... 95 or 96? Yeah. 96 yeah. million? Yeah. yeah. It got... A opening, oh, did you say opening night? No, opening oh, no, weekend. Opening weekend. Oh, opening they weekend. got like around 95. Damn, 95. that's got, fucking crazy. Yeah, they set an August record. Yeah, uh, that's that's insane, dude. That's like... They did that with it with characters that nobody, barely anybody knows. What I'll was say, their budget on that movie though? A hundred and something million. Uh, so they I mean, was hoping even... to hit seventy, but they did open a day early though. In all so fairness. they haven't so even they broken even Thursday. yet. Then that's just what we get. I know, didn't. but I'm just saying, like, you have a fucking that's kind of shit. Like that kind of sucks. Like you think about it, like. I mean, don't know. That's good. Like, don't get me wrong. $95 million in one weekend is fucking incredible. That's insane. I'm saying it just sucks that you had a $95 million o- like opening weekend and you didn't break even. On yeah, that. but here's like, something else. To- I don't think... It, the, do, At this time with Dark Knight or... When, when like, she was opening back, weekend, hang on. What, hold on. One at a time here. Pirate, what are you saying? When, at, at this time, okay... At this, by this time, I think it was oh, the the second one, Dark Knight or Dark Knight. Dark yeah, Knight. Right. Yeah, Dark Knight. Yeah, it came out in July. By this time, the when it came out, it had already reached four hundred and some million dollars. So that's imagine, and, uh, imagine what this can do. Yeah, that's that's. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not a matter of like opening weekend. They're not trying to match budget opening weekend. That's true. Part, that's true. They was hoping. Seventy million was what they wanted to hit, and that's with opening an extra day. They op- they actually released it on Thursday night. Well, not all just like come out Thursday night now. Well, but not I, like in all areas. Like our area, no. not everyone. Really, you my know, area, like, like every theater is playing eight thirty releases and stuff. You're like in New that. York. Yeah, that's like true. East Coast, West Coast, yeah. like California and shit like that. They get all the movies. That's like if this select theaters playing, you guys are going to get it. We're not. What you it, know? What were you saying, Brian? Fuck, I forgot now. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Clear, clearly, uh, it was any, important. Like, does any movie really? I don't like. I'm not a. Obviously, I'm not making movies and a film major and shit like that. But like, do many movies like make their money back first weekend? No, no. most of them don't. No. Most most of them don't. I'm just saying with. I guess my point was um, that like pretty much with none such, of them, dude. yeah, like, not not with those that big all, a budget. Yeah, no. almost none. But I'm just saying, like, with a fucking, with a colossal fucking opening weekend. I mean, most movies hope to make a hundred million dollars, period. Yeah. Period. Over the time, over the lifetime of their their of their cinematic experience, like of being in theaters, they hope to get a hundred million dollars. That's like a fucking achievement. This one almost did it in two days. My point is, like, damn, you almost hit a hundred grand, which is what most people shoot for long term, in two days. But it just sucks that that wasn't like. How cool would it have been if they would have hit like, you know, like if they'd only spent ninety five million and they hit ninety six million on the first weekend and they're already profit. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like that would have been like icing on the fucking cake. I guess is my point. But 
Well, I mean, yeah, anytime you overshoot like that quick, but... Oh, I, I mean, overshoot really quick. <laughs> <laughs> That's Sorry, what she I said. To, I had to go there. <laughs> <laughs> oh god i i think i do that's fucking amazing dude i mean that's record breaking what they're doing so we're uh good for them we're not going to talk about it today but uh here soon possibly as early as next well probably not next week because i think brian's going to be out so maybe in uh maybe episode 38 or some somewhere around there we'll do a, a full full breakdown review of guardians of the galaxy uh once myself and pirate um, get an opportunity to uh, go see it, enjoy oh, I'll it, see it tonight. and then uh, also, and then also we have the whole crew here because I know that everybody's going to want to chime in on this one and oh, uh, and and talk it's about it. One of the best Marvel movies so far. Really? Yeah, it was really good. It that was good. Really, it was better it, than it, Cap yeah. Two because I know you loved Cap Two. Um, well, because he said that Cap Two was the best Marvel movie. Right, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, I got it. I had the weekend to think about it and really let it sit, and I want to see it again. But to me, it could be. I like the whole space movies. My favorite movie is Star Wars. Ooh, oh yeah, yeah, I love Star Wars. I heard. And to me, now thinking about it, to me, it's my favorite Cap. I mean, Cap was really good. Cap there was two very good. Types of movies, like one was a. Uh, like a espionage political thriller. The other one's a space opera. Two completely to, different films. Up in movies like yeah. like Star Wars and stuff like that. It's Guardians. After sitting and thinking about the movie, can be my favorite Marvel movie. Wow, I heard a pretty cool statement. statement from a writer. I can't remember who it was, but they they was writing on. Um... I I wish I could figure who the, it was a comic book writer. It might even be an artist. It was somebody on Facebook that that I follow or friends with, and they said that this is the, the Guardians of the Galaxies is the Star Wars for the kids today, like the young ones growing up seeing. It. I'm like, that's a pretty bold. That's statement. That's a fucking for... strong statement. I remember it's... when I remember when. They redid Star Wars, remastered it in T. Oh, yeah, Clearly, late I wasn't. I wasn't, and neither you guys weren't alive during. I know no. you guys are both, or at least pirate. You're older than I am. You were not was, alive during any of the Star Wars original cinematic releases, right? Um, no. Well, I was alive. I mean, in eighty and eighty three, right. but like not the first one. Like Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. But when was, I mean, I was Empire Strikes Back? Was what year? Eighty. 80 and then every every three years 77 was star wars 80 was the okay so i was yeah i mean i was one year old when when uh i mean obviously i didn't see it in theaters yeah well or getting to what i was saying is i remember like how impactful even at at, at our age yeah. coming in and seeing well, that yeah. after it was in the cinemas seeing it on vhs and shit yes we are that old uh how fucking powerful and shit that stuff was that I remember when they remastered it in THX and Where going and I fucking, I fucking waited in line for like five and a half hours to get to see it in the fucking giant theater at the mall, like the big theater. And like, dude, it was, it was crazy, man. I, I yeah, went with I like two couple of my friends. Yeah, things. I did that too. That shit Every, was, it was they, each one was played for three weeks. Wasn't it? Well, uh, something yeah, like that. something like that. It was like yeah. two or three weeks. And then I remember waiting. I remember going at like one thirty in the morning to see Phantom Menace when it released yeah. on fucking exams week or some shit in high school and being completely let down that I like didn't <laughs> didn't sleep before exams to see fucking Jar Jar Binks making Star Wars Dude. look like a bunch of shit. I remember we did this. I did the same thing. It was the midnight screening at it, yeah. and it was like I went in there, and it was like my entire high school. They had was fucking the news cameras theater. and shit everywhere. Like I'm excited. I'm excited after hearing you say that that there are people that have been alive during the Star Wars phenomenon when it was really kicking. To say that that this is the Star Wars of the next generation. That is a fucking strong statement. That really makes me this much more excited to go see it. 
and to see how today's youth responds to it. I hope that it gets that much buzz around it. I hope that Guardians of the Galaxy gets that kind of following that motherfuckers are dressing up like Rock, Rocket Raccoon and Groot oh. and shit oh, to go. Oh, no, so I'm talking for there weeks. Was... For weeks and weeks. Every time <laughs> they fucking go. I want to see that shit happening in fucking September. I'm just saying, god damn it. No, you probably will. There's guys still comic book conventions. Even. That's what I'm saying, man. That shit, that would be so cool to have like a resurgence of that kind of movie where it's it's such a strong emotion that motherfuckers are like clapping and cheering and shit in the theater. Like that adds so much to the experience of watching a film. Like that's how you know it's a fucking great film when motherfuckers already know what's going to happen and they still clap because they're so excited about watching it. The soundtrack makes the whole movie. All those seventies and eighties songs, like hooked yeah, on. Yeah, I was listening to it on Spotify. Damn, I got. I can't wait to go see this. I'm gonna go see it's, it. I'm gonna go see it this weekend. All for I sure. have to say, I'm not no spoiler or anything because I don't want to ruin it for. Yeah, don't do that. And you guys, but you know where this movie is going. I mean, oh, we already speculated, but you see it in this movie. Oh, this is the movie culminates it. Fuck yes. Yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait. All right, guys. Well, that's about it. Oh, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Actually, you know what? Oh, no. You know what we need to talk about? This is this is something. Sorry, I totally just ran right over you. Go ahead. Say what you're, you're saying. You're fine. It's never a big deal. I got excited. I got excited because this is something we were we were gonna talk about on the first attempt at recording this episode that we didn't get to because of some technical issues and shit. And we wanted to talk about the Deadpool trailer. The, the Deadpool footage. Oh yeah, I thought we talked about that. No, nah, we haven't even talked about that shit yet. No. That's what I'm saying. Like, if if you haven't seen the the high res Deadpool, uh, I don't. Even, it's not even a trailer. It's just some footage. It, it's like test footage. Yeah, it's like test footage. It is awesome. What? Yeah, Brian, your thought. I know you liked it. I I thought if they did a move, well. <sighs> I don't know how they'd make them this movie compared to the test footage. The test footage obviously is all in the CGI animation. I mean, and it definitely would have to be rated R. Yeah, oh, they, absolutely. They released a picture of Ryan Reynolds in a mocap suit that was making that test footage. I don't know how they'd do the movie. Whether it'd be they would switch it over doing a full movie in live action, or they'd do that. But anyway, they would make the movie if they made it like how that was. It would be phenomenal. It'd be. I hope it would they make it like that. The Wolverine movies. I hope they. I hope they make it in all CGI like they did that. That little. So they can pull off shit like that. Yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. Like they pull off the fucking super mm. crazy shit, and it would be a little more believable because it's CGI, not like. Yeah. Well, I like the fact that if they did it in CGI, that would definitely mean they're not tying it into the X-Men, which means they don't have to make it PG-13 and they can keep right. it rated R. Yeah, and, and I, I think but that if they, if they a make Deadpool it live action, movie needs to be rated R. Oh, yeah, if they make it live action, then you know that the people there's going to be so many people pissed because it's not tied into the new X-Men. Yeah, you know, I, 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 don't th- I think they should keep and... it completely separate. Yeah. Yeah. I think it would be, I think it would be well, an think... awesome standalone. You know how they could do that? Give it back to Marvel. There it is. <laughs> Actually, oh yeah, no, no, it's not. Yeah, that is Fox at all. Yeah. I mean, would it be awesome to see like a Avengers four movie, and then you see Deadpool running through the background, <laughs> just like waving, like not even part of the story, just fucking waving his hands around like a fucking lunatic. You know what though? I have. I wonder if 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 they own Deadpool, do they own like all of the Deadpool's? Yeah. 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 Anything related to X Men universe yeah, and they own the whole like that. umbrella. But I mean, not was who was it? I don't know. I don't know. All right. Well, more speculation to come. But that's about it for this episode, guys. I'm Fox Two. We got Pirate. See you guys. And the whole F and Brian. Sponge. <laughs> All right.